Here in Jutabog, there are few signs that this small town was once part of communist East Germany. 20 years after unification, there are few things left to remind people of that era. Do you still recognize these and what memories do they hold for you? Oh, cool. Wow, cool, an old East German mark made of aluminium. It was pretty cool back then. It's strange to hold one in your hand again after 20 years. <laughs> Yeah, that's from East Germany, but I'm not old enough to remember it. One person who clearly remembers is Gunter Keim. His family has run a stationery store here for more than 80 years. He remembers clearly the day the Deutschmark came to Jutebog. Things went crazy. People were desperate to get their hands on Western goods, and they stood in a long lineup. We even had stalls outside the shop. It was amazing. We reached sales figures we can only dream about these days. Keim was prepared for the rush. In addition to the tried and trusted East German items, he had already stocked up on Western products. People had watched West German TV for 40 years. They knew the products, they had Western currency, and they wanted to spend it. By the spring of 1990, East Germans had already taken to the streets demanding the Deutschmark. They were abandoning East Germany in droves, so policymakers were forced to make speedy decisions. I don't think we would have been able to make people stay in the East. We'd have seen a mass exodus. Some four million people had gone to the West after 1949 and again after 1989. We had no time to lose. hatten wir diese Zeit nicht. Monetary union was pushed through with great speed, and on the stroke of midnight, July 1st, 1990, people queued to exchange their East German marks for the long-awaited hard currency. An average of 4,000 marks per person at an exchange rate of one to one. Until then, they had been exchanging up to 11 East German marks for one Deutschmark on the black market. The new currency was unusual even for East German politicians. It was strange paying for everyday items with Western money. We'd saved our Deutschmarks for something special. We didn't spend them on bread rolls or petrol or a cup of coffee. It was a tough experience, but I survived. Wilfried Fuhrmann is a monetary expert who witnessed the introduction of the Deutschmark in East Germany firsthand. He soon realized the new currency wouldn't just bring buying power, but also huge economic problems. The biggest mistake was failing to adjust people's hopes and expectations. They should have been told you're starting at a relatively low level, and when productivity is increased, you'll soon see improvement. The mistake was to try to match the standard of living in the West as quickly as possible. East Germans went on a spending spree. At long last, they were free to travel to the West and buy Western products. East German goods fell by the wayside. I went to our baker today and he was selling 10 slices of bread for 2.99. Here they cost just 89 pfennigs. Exactly the same bread, the same slices. There are hardly any East German products around. Are there any East German products you'd like to buy? I can't think of any. I don't know. East German manufacturers lost nearly all their customers overnight, and competitors from the West weren't the only problem. Because wages were now paid in Deutschmarks, it meant East German products were no longer so cheap. And that meant they lost out the competition from the West. Many of the rundown East German companies collapsed. The government agency Troihan was set up to privatize state-run companies. But factory closures and high unemployment sparked a political dispute still not resolved today. The Treuhand made arbitrary decisions. It decided which companies received help and which didn't. 
They looked for buyers for some firms and ignored others. I once asked the Treuhand president which criteria they worked on, and she couldn't answer me. We gave capital to the companies with viable prospects so that they could restructure. But it was down to the companies themselves to find the buyers for their goods and gain a share of the international market so that they could survive. Günther Keim is an East German success story. 20 years ago, he had one shop and employed three people. Today, he has 15 shops and a workforce of 45. And now he works in euros instead of Deutschmarks. 1990 was a dynamic year. Nobody, from the man on the street to the businessman and the politicians, had a concept. Things simply developed. We were overwhelmed. Nobody had expected it. Günther Keim is sure that the introduction of the Deutschmark was a gift from heaven that his business has only seen once in its 80-year history.